And so, more questions on uh, turning forces and moments. This is question six on the sheet that uh, we started on. Uh, same basic idea, except this one comes up with a couple of different things. One of the other items you need to know, first question, state the principle of moments. All right. This is that if something's in equilibrium, that means not accelerating, not turning faster, the sum of all, the, all of them added up, the sum of the clockwise moments must be equal to the sum of the anticlockwise moments. If you just say clockwise has got to equal anticlockwise to get you one mark, if you then, if you maybe said the sum of them has to be equal to the sum of the anticlockwise, you maybe get two, and you also need to say that it's to do with objects being in equilibrium. So always look, it's A level, see how many marks are required, it's three marks, so heavy stuff. Right, we've got a load pulling down on the end, on, on this bar, the bar is pivoting here, and the spring tension is 37 newtons, and the spring is pulling the whole lot upwards, and there's also the weight of the bar acting down here with 5 newtons. And they said, apply the principle of moments, meaning clockwise has got to be equal anticlockwise, to calculate the mass. Now, that's the only tricky bit, the mass of the load. So we're going to have to go back and work out the mass when we've figured out the force. So, on to the question. Right, we have just got to be careful of a couple of little bits where they were slightly unhelpful on this. Right, okay, just so that we know what we're doing. We're going to be looking for principle of moments, anti-clockwise moments will be equal to clockwise moments added together, summed up. Right, right now let's just put in some of the forces so we know what they're all doing. We've got the weight of the bar. There it is. There's the weight of the bar. Right. And that there is 5 newtons. We've got it written there. That's 5 newtons. We've got this unknown load here. We don't know how big this is. Draw the arrow there. We'll call that W. We don't know what that is. But And then we also have the spring, which is the tension of the spring. So that's acting upwards and it's a big big force that is um, 37 newtons acting upwards don't forget that's the pivot so we need to know distances from that pivot right now this spring tension is acting at this distance so there it is spring tension is at 0.17 meters the weight is acting at 0.45 but be careful here because the uh, the arrowheads aren't particularly clear and the distance of the weight it's 0.7 from the spring but the spring is 0.15 from the pivot so the total distance for the weight perpendicular is 0.7 plus 0.15 so it's 0.85 five all right trap for the unwary how do i know yes all right anti-clockwise moments must equal clockwise moments so let's start off the spring is acting uh anti-clockwise so that means that 37 newtons multiplied by 0.15 meters is all we've got going on for clockwise moments so for anti-clockwise moments when we're pivoting around here. And that's going to add up to, sorry, the, the counteracting that, we've got the clockwise moment due to the weight, which is 5.0 newtons acting at a distance of 0.45. And put that in brackets. And then added to that is the mystery load, which is W, and that's at a distance of 0.45. Eight, five uh, meters. That was meters. Now, doing the multiplications here, this comes out as a uh, five point five five newtons, right? And that's being balanced by those two, right? And the way it actually works out 
is that you're going to get um, those as being 2.25, uh, sorry, Newton meters, 2.25 Newton meters plus, and I'll write it like this, plus uh, 0.85 of W. So do your rearrangements and you end up with um, 5.55 minus 2.25 and then you've just got 0.85 W on its own so divide by 0.85 equals W and W comes out as 3.882 newtons which later on we can round to 3.9 newtons, we'll leave it at 3.882. Now we know that um, weight is mass times, and I'll write it as GFS, right, or indeed as G, and therefore mass is equal to weight divided by GFS or G. So we've got our and again, put it in as your 3.882, just to be on the safe side. Divide by 9.8, which we were given back here. All right, use the one they've given you. And you end up with an answer of 0 0.396 kilograms. And again, appropriate number of um, significant figures, two of them. So that would round to 0 0.40 kgs right that's your answer for uh, part one so that's done right. then they ask a question which could be a slightly confusing they're asking you over here to calculate how big the force is acting at the pivot and work out what the direction of the force at the pivot is so what you could do is you could say to yourself right let's have a look at a diagram and let's put in the forces again we've got the spring tension again which we know it's big force it's 37 i'll even put in the little dotted lines so that you can see that it keeps it's great big force 37 newtons we have the um, weight of the bar itself which is down there that's five newtons okay just five newtons down there in fact maybe that there why not that's just five newtons and then the the load here which i will put it in now as being about um, 3.9 so it wasn't that big in the end All right 3.9 newtons now looking at this sort of the first bit of the second bit of the answer actually occurs to you first we've got a pivot there and upward forces have got to be balancing downward forces so if I look at this upward force must equal to downward force All right well you've got this great big upward force of 37 and you've got a downward force of, uh, of 5 here and 3.9 here. So you can see, I think pretty clearly, that the force from on this pivot is also going to have to be downwards. And it's going to have to be pretty big to balance that big upward force. Now, I'll show you that you don't need to worry too much about being able to guess that at the start. We go to an up, upward force, it's got to be 37 newtons. Then we've got downward forces of 5 newtons and 3.9 newtons and our force on the pivot. And if you rearrange that lot, you end up with the force on the pivot is 37 minus 5 minus 3.9. It comes out as 28.1 newtons. Right, which you can then, of course, round to uh, 28 newtons to do sig figs. Now, if you'd have guessed that it was an upward force and you'd have said, all oh, right, well, 37 plus FP equals to those others, you'd have still got this answer 28.1, but it would have been a minus number. 
meaning that you've guessed the direction wrong. So if you guessed it as up and you've got a minus number, then in fact it's down. So you just then go back and draw the arrow down, which is what the second bit of the question is. So that answers it. You've got the size of that force as 28 newtons down, 28 and 5 and 3.9, balance is 37. So you've sorted it there. Now, the last bit of this, which, as I've proven, you can get yourself in a right old mess with, is not as difficult as it looks. You've got a K for a spring, OK? And we already know that the force to stretch a spring is K multiplied by delta L, by definition. You're also aware, in the A-level way, of the potential energy stored by a spring as being equal to the, the force multiplied by the extension divided by 2. Because you get this nifty little triangle, don't you? You have uh, force here to extend it. You have uh, the delta L here. And you get a graph. And it's the area under the graph. So force times extension, but divide by 2 because it's a triangle area. Now, your simplest way of substituting this is that you can say to yourself, well, potential energy stored is the force multiplied by delta L over 2, but you know from this that delta L is actually equal to F divided by K. So, substitute in. The potential energy is actually going to be force multiplied by force again, divided by 2K. Or, if you like, in this case, it's going to be uh, the force squared. And the force on this is 37 newtons from before. So it's 37 squared, divided by 2 times the K, which is 550. And that gives you an answer for energy stored of uh, 1.24 joules, 1.2445 it comes out as, 1.2445 joules, which you could round to 1.24 joules. All right, away you go. All right, so it's not as bad as it looks. Is that, you know, you've got loads of information. You already know K, they've told you K, you know what force is. And, you know, you don't, delta L is a factor of them all. So there you are, done.